Alright, I love COD Zombies. It's intense, addictive and incredibly fun. But what is it that makes these zombies different from any other? Well, where do I start? The massive fucking dragon or the worm? At its core, Zombies is basic, typically offering a lot less than its compares. But yet, I've played COD Zombies over countless years and played so many other games trying to replicate that experience. And that includes COD itself. Like, what the actual fuck is this? I signed up for Zombies, no extraterrestrial pest control. On the outside looking in, it's hard to see the appeal of COD Zombies. I mean, how is this fun? With many, including myself, arguing it's the fun and simplicity, because yeah, it is satisfying popping heads. But then again, what the actual fuck am I? What am I even doing? Thought I was playing zombies, no monster ink. So what is it? Why has this simple game mode become a staple alongside the Call of Duty behemoth? Well, of course, I don't have the exact answer, but I do have what makes zombies special for me. It's the fact that George Romero is a boss zombie that clobbers cunts with the stage light, okay? I I is that so hard to understand? For those who don't know, zombies is a round based survival mode where you start with a weak pistol, earn points from killing zombies, buy new weapons, perks, upgrades and doors to new areas. On top of that, you typically have side objectives like getting the power on or, you know, satanic rituals, which will give you access to better tools like the ability to pack punch a weapon or purchase alcohol, all to help you achieve your goal. Don't die. Pretty simple, right? For fuck's sake, it's round three. What was the objective again? Most importantly, killing zombies is fun. Yeah. I, I know, it's a shocker, right? Being packaged in with COD, there's always been an absolute ton of fun weapons to use, with that consistent above average gunplay. It is COD after all, not exactly like they're new to the shooting gig. Lining up a full train of zombies and splattering heads might as well be Crack's cousin, it's that satisfying. Or even, I don't know, uh, blowing them off the face of the earth? That's fun too. There's a ton of variety. Don't like a weapon? Use another. There's a hundred more. No guarantee it will be good, but it will be different. The large weapon variety combined with the tasty feedback of heads imploding, limbs flying off, and the ever so satisfying trickle of points makes killing zombies a blast. That's not to mention the wonder weapons. The weapons nicknamed the wonder weapons because they're a uh, fucking incredible. I really don't know what's so wonderful about this. It's, it's just a bow. Holy shit! The powerful weapons obtained from the mystery box are bing bam boom, and you've got this. What exactly is this? There's been an insane amount of cool wacky weapons from the Thunder Gun to the Wonder Waffle, Cerberus or even the 3179 JJB215, the, the gun that makes the zombies small. Which on its own is the best thing I've ever seen. But you can walk over their adorable heads and you'll have just committed genocide. Now that's epic. There's so many others I haven't mentioned like the Winter's Hill, which everyone hates for some reason. Mate, it's a functioning Tango Ice Blast. How could you hate this masterpiece? Every wonder weapon is an absolute thrill to get, and a great power trip, but usually relies on you using the ammo as efficiently as possible just to balance them out. They also bleed into the strategies of maps, making unique strategies viable just with what they can bring to the table, and because some wonder weapons are map specific, this can lead to some maps playing completely differently due to the addition of one gun. Which leads me onto one of the most important parts of Zombies, and that's its maps. Zombies has produced some incredible maps over the years, and transit. Get the fuck, Dobie! Zombies is filled with maps that convey a wide range of unique atmospheres incredibly well. Yes, um, sand. Which isn't just always unsettling horror, which the early maps do very well, and I love them for it. Brian Bolton over to me still gives me chills to this day. So many maps are bursting with character, like Shadows of the Evil. Just look at its vibrant colour palette, light and environmental design, and the three-headed shark man. Every section of the map has been so well crafted, giving every area a meaning, filled with unique assets that make these areas a joy to explore. And if it wasn't clear already, I love how wacky Zombies gets with these maps. Ever since the beginning of Black Ops, Zombies adopted the fuck it mentality. Run about a cinema? Sure. Zombies on the moon? Why not? Have JFK, Nixon, this guy and fucking Castro defend the Pentagon? Well, that was a given. The maps are incredibly diverse. I literally don't know how you can get any more diverse than a World War II bunker to inside the giant worm's organs. I mean, compare the creativity to these maps to any other zombie game that's trying to replicate that Left 4 Dead original look. 
wrecked building after building with the occasional fire or debris. Zombies games are littered with these repetitive environments that like to capture that close to reality zombies mix, as if the apocalypse just happened to our current world, which is cool the first few times. The next 40? I'm not too sure. But that's just visually. Gameplay wise I love them too. Because zombies are built to be simple and predictable, there's an emphasis on level design to create difficult encounters over the traditional ways like varied enemy types. Yep, there are special zombies, but they aren't core to the experience. They're more there to be pricks. Mate, you've just nicked my gun. Maps are typically confined to tight and moderately spaced areas that force you to be on edge and always moments away from disaster. Every room feels different with its own obstacles and dangers. Like there's this open space, great for training some zombies, and now there's a dragon. No, 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 it's, it's cool, I'll just go somewhere else. Difficulty comes down to the maps with how much room and resources they give you. Just one room that's too big can make the map way too easy, which is great for making maps play completely differently, as strategies might be polar opposites, just down to the structure. These maps don't force you into one area, they give you full reign of the map to develop your own strategies and play in your own way. Not to mention the replayability of these maps, as you try new strategies, take different paths, use different setups, all to help you reach a new high round. Or just have some fun. I just love how much zombies make you focus on your surroundings and movement around the environment. It takes simple movement options and turns them into a satisfying learning curve that as you always assess in your roots, learning how to lead zombies, how to get past, creating distance and how to get out of difficult situations, which when mastered it gets to a point where it's almost dance like, slipping by tons of zombies by inches like it's nothing, that's a phenomenal feeling. This works so well because of the predictability and fairness of the zombies, because for the most part deaths don't feel unfair, they're usually Usually the player's fault due to positioning, lack of awareness or messing up your train. You've also got power ups, which are drops you get from killing zombies, ranging from max ammo, insta kills, literal nukes, to carpentry. Yes, it's as useless as it sounds. They add an element of RNG that can assist or completely change the tide and lead to some incredibly memorable moments. For example, as a war hero I am, in this situation I'm trying to save Exhibit A, also known as Steven. But there's an issue, there's a fuck ton of zombies and there's no way I can revive them without dying. So I start blasting using everything I've got in a desperate attempt to get some breathing room for a revive. But they just keep coming. Steve is seconds away from dying and losing his gear. But the impossible happens. We get a nukes drop. I sprint into that thing and boom, zombies kaput, allowing me to revive Steve with no time to spare. It's moments like these that made me love this mode so much. We died 30 seconds later, but that's irrelevant. But they can still cause problems. Because they're direct drops of the zombies, they're always going to be lodged between the horde. So let me set another scene. We're above round 30, a respectable round, but I'm dead. All Stuart has to do is survive and I'll respawn the next round. He has the best guns in the game and has little arnies, which is pretty much an octopus thrown hand. So Stuart's killing some zombies. And another power up, but this time it's fire cell, which makes the mystery box appear everywhere letting you get weapons for 10 quid. But sure doesn't need anything out of it, so he wouldn't risk his life for it, right? Right? Oh, why am I going for that? I've got the two best guns in the game. Zombie games love to slap in teamwork mechanics. They require constant coordination with friends. COD takes a different approach. The approach I like to call, What the fuck, Steven? Boost before you ruin my train, you prick! Alright, that, that's it. COD Zombies is one of the few Zombies games that the solo experience can just be as fun as in a team. Both require different strategies unique to the maps, but you're not worse off for playing on your own. Yes, some maps suit certain amount of players better, but the experience is still fun either way. Teamwork is simple. Keep your mates alive, have a strategy that works together, or at least doesn't hamper each other, and ensure you're all financially stable. Because there's truly nothing worse than spawning back in on round 50 and only being able to buy an Olympia. The Olympia being slang for fucking useless! As I mentioned earlier, there are also special zombies. They range from boss zombies like an astronaut to Bill Nye the science guy. There's also less threatening alternative zombies like the Nova Crawlers or the iconic Hellhounds. Again, for the most part, they don't present drastic changes to the gameplay, but act as a way to balance certain maps, adding more high intense situations, and keeping the gameplay loop a bit more dynamic. It's not just killing zombies by the way, there's a story that's evolved throughout the games. A story which I can confirm I know absolutely nothing about. You follow multiple groups, but mainly the iconic Dempsey, Richthofen, Takio and Nikolai, which are fun caricatures of their countries, which leads them to being literal opposites. Dempsey the American, his first name is literally Tank, and his personality could be summed up as an uh, Ooh fucking raw motherfuckers! Richthofen the German is a mad Volkswagen scientist, Takio the Japan man is a man of honour, and Nikolai the Russian 
Billy drinks alcohol. They're great characters that work incredibly well together with fun dynamics and interactions, although nostalgia is a massive factor. I love these guys. But characters aside, what is the story actually about? Well, it was originally just German stuntum experiments and zombies. But now, I have honestly no idea, but will give it my best Scottish recap. Right, so there's a technical cult, civil war, some Germans experiment with some wacky 115 element, which leads to zombies, they nuke the earth at some point, there's Aethers, Agurthers, I think, what the fuck is what? The Cronorium, the Primus crew, the Ultimus crew, oh f- you know, fuck this! I I've watched Tim Hansen's Zombies Oversimplified video 10 times now, and I still have no idea what's happening! And how could I not talk about perks? Another big hallmark of zombies. Take a sip and boom. Performance enhancing drugs in liquid form. There's a ton of perks from the iconic juggernaut that lets you take more hits, to mule kick that lets you carry three weapons, or even Widow's Wine, which literally makes you shite spider webs. Perks are expensive and are lost when done, so you've got to pick the best setup that suits your playstyle. But my favourite part about these perks is they've all got their own original jingles that are absolute bangers. Your hands are cold. Your movements are reckless. You want more speed. You're feeling restless. Sir, take a sip, kid! The care put into these things is just stellar. But again, this is all from someone who grew up with zombies. Every opinion has that inherent nostalgia bias. And I understand that. So I'm going to get my friend's opinion who isn't the biggest fan of COD Zombies because I believe in the value of hearing different opinions. Thanks for having me on your video, uh, you bold fucking twat. Uh, anyway, uh, what I think of COD Zombies is it's very shit. Sorry, what I meant to say is it's absolutely flawless. Thanks for that brutally honest take, Proxidist. Overall, Zombies may not be the most groundbreaking mode. But I'm glad I grew up with zombies. Watching it grow from a basic semi-horror wave based survival game to its peak in Black Ops 3 has been a blast. It is without a doubt the best side game mode I've ever played. Steve, tell us the answer! Hey! I press those lips again, 